Welcome to another inspiring and timely message from our pastors here at the Crossroads. Good to be with you here this afternoon. It's a special day. The day that the Lord has made. So let's rejoice. Be glad in it. In Jesus' name. This afternoon, I want to share with you a message that the Lord gave me. Even in coming here, I said, well... Did he give it to me? But it's all about trust. So I had to trust that what God gave me is good for us. It's the fresh manna that he wants to supply for our daily life. I believe the Lord wants to feed us every day. Every day the Lord wants to bless us and lead us into green pastures to see our souls restored. Praise God. Who's that old married couple here? Just, uh, was it a week, two weeks ago? (laughs) Just one week ago. What a difference a week makes. (laughs) God bless you. Welcome back home. Praise God. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you work all things together for good, with your great love. We just thank you for blessing this group of people that are here this afternoon. Lord, you have something good for them, for all of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's trust the Lord on this message about trust. Trust is the firm belief. This is just from the dictionary. Trust is the firm belief in the reliability, truth, ability, or strength of someone or something. To have trust means to have faith or confidence. Today we have confidence that what Jesus has begun in us, he will fulfill. All of us, whatever background, whether we are young or old, all of us have trust issues. All of us battle in the area of trust. And some of us battle more than others. Some of us are so afraid because we've been let down. We've all been let down. We've all been disappointed. Some of us, more than one marriage, some of us, many of us, had more than one job, more more than one opportunity, and things didn't work out the way we had planned, and so we have trust issues. But the Lord is here today to remind us where we really are safest, where we really have the best opportunity by placing the right kind of boundaries around our life, not getting off in this direction or that direction because we are trusting in the right things, the one who is reliable, the one who is truthful, the one with the ability, the one with the strength, the one with the reliability. And so we are learning to trust Jesus in every situation. I look at a young couple that's in love, newly married, and there's that that glow. There's oh my goodness, it's almost intoxicating. In fact, there's actual psychological terms for this when you fall in love. And I see these couples come into my office, and and then, then I begin to raise issues and talk about different things and they look at me with this strange look and like us ever fight us ever ever have problems <gasps> he's the most wonderful he's the most amazing he's the most and I go uh-huh that's good <laughs> but then reality hits and and we grow and we're disappointed at times we're let down at times <clears throat> and at times we fall short of being the ideal. And that's coming from both the male and female perspective. But yet, the older we get, the more we learn to trust in Jesus and to get closer to him, the easier it is to trust each other because we're not so much trusting in that the arm of flesh. We're not just trusting in that person. We're trusting in Jesus inside that person which makes it a whole lot easier. I mean, if if Pastor Sander has to trust in this person, Norman Lee Howell, 
and have all her expectations that I be this Prince Charming and I be this perfect person, then, you know, she is setting herself up for failure because my feet are clay and I'm going to fall. I'm going to let her down. I'm going to disappoint. And that's an unhealthy position to put anyone into as being your hope, your expectation, placing all of your confidence in that arm of flesh, which is weak. But the closer we get to Jesus, our trust issues, the way we've been disappointed in jobs, the way we've been disappointed in relationships. That's why it's so important for couples that are going to get married and perhaps they've been in a different relationship. Perhaps they were married before. And they are carrying the luggage, the baggage of their past with them. You have to come to a new understanding, a new place, a new recognition in your life that your hope and your expectations are first and foremost on the one who is most reliable, the one who is most consistent, and that is Jesus Christ. And so God begins to place a new perspective, a new outlook. Psalms 28, verse 7 tells us, The Lord is my strength and my shield. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him. And I am helped. I can see where he helps me. And I am helped. Therefore, my heart leaps with joy. You see a childlike faith. It's fun to watch little children. They can get excited about the simplest of things. And we become so jaded and cynical. We've been disappointed so many times. And our expectations are sometimes so high in people. And then, boom, reality hits. Stuff happens. And we get disappointed. And so then we, we guard our hearts and we, 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 we shy away. And sometimes we just want to hide under a rock somewhere. We don't want to have to face reality. I can remember early on in the church, many, many years ago, there was a young man in the church who had been disappointed deeply. And he actually developed a psychological problem about going out of his house. He couldn't go to work. He couldn't leave his house. He couldn't step out from the front porch because he was so afraid. He had real trust issues. We had to go into his home, into his heart, and be able to minister with him and, 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 and assure him of God's faithfulness that he could get out of those four walls and be able to go to a job, be able to live his life. And we slowly saw him be healed so he could leave his home and be able to go out there. You might say, oh, well, that's extreme. But, you know, all of us close ourselves off in one way or another because we've been hurt. We've been let down. We've been disappointed. And so we try to shield ourselves. But the Lord is here to be a shield for us to protect us and to guard our hearts so that we could, my heart trusts him. If you're going to have a healthy heart, you have to have, you have to be able to deal with those issues of trust because it's that hardness that spiritually creates those hardened arteries that causes our heart to not function in, in the proper way so that we are not able to leap for joy. God wants to renew us every day. Our end should be better than the beginning. We should be renewed on a daily basis so that we can continue to function at our very best. But if we've got trust issues going on, then we're going to overly guard our hearts against attack and we're going to close ourselves off from opportunities. We're going to close ourselves off from the, the doors that the Lord wants to open for us. We're going to isolate ourselves, and the Lord doesn't want that. And the Lord spoke to me this, this, on this last part of the verse. It says, therefore, my heart leaps for joy, and with my song, I shall thank him. I believe that 
the Lord Jesus Christ wants to place a song in each of our hearts. I can remember at the ripe old age of 17, being so disappointed, feeling so let down. I'd wanted to fit in, and so I started doing things as a teenager. Even though I was raised in church, I wanted to fit in. I wanted to get along, and, and it caused me such pain in getting along, and I made choices that were not good for me. And all of a sudden, I came to the end of myself, and I realized I needed to go back home to where I really belonged, to find rest and trust in someone who was not going to disappoint me or not going to let me down. And when I did that, he put a song in my heart. And that's what I want to encourage each and every one of you. I felt like the Holy Spirit specifically said this today, that I was to ask each of you this question. You need to examine your own heart right now. But what is your song? What is, you know, uh, couples all ask him before their wedding, well, what's your song? You know, what, what, what do you want to have at the wedding? You know, and they usually come up with a song. But I believe that the Holy Spirit wants to sing to us in our relationship to, with him to keep us healthy and that a song will be birthed in our hearts. I can remember as a, as a young man of 17 and going to a, a church service and I, haven't, I hadn't heard this in the last 40 years I haven't heard this song sung. But there was a song birthed in my heart at that moment as the, the minister got up and shared the word of the Lord, and he did it through singing. And he said, Faith in the Father and faith in the Son, faith in the Holy Ghost, victories are won. Demons will tremble and sinners awake. Faith in Christ Jesus can anything shake. That simple chorus. But I repeated it, and I repeated it, and I repeated it, because that's the song I needed in my heart at that moment. So when I was facing trials, when I was facing temptations, I was faith, facing stuff that I, I wasn't equipped to deal with, I would go back in my spirit, and I would say, faith in the Father and faith in the Son. Faith in the Holy Ghost, victories are won. Demons will tremble and sinners awake. Faith in Christ Jesus can anything shake. Prior to that, I was singing, Born to be wild. Or I was singing, I can't get no satisfaction. Or I was singing things that were like, Anything but hope. Sometimes I'll, I'll listen to someone like Adele that has this the tonal quality in her voice. It's just so amazing. And then I'll hear the words she's actually saying, and I want to start repeating those words, and I go, whoa, no, 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 no. I need to realign my thinking. I need to realign the song that's in my heart. And that began to form my own personal theology. <laughs> It was long before I went to seminaries, long before I had all of this knowledge, even though even to this day it's very limited. But I kept singing that song in my spirit. Faith in the Father and faith in the Son. And I began to let it vibrate within my spirit man. And there's something very important in having a song in your heart. As much as it goes out, I used to work in a nightclub back in the day. <laughs> there was this guy named Carlos Santana that would introduce this really cool song back then, <laughs> and it still reverberates today. <laughs> and I, you know, I worked as a bouncer for a while in that club. And I thought it was pretty cool. But you know what? Santana, I don't care. But that song that he's made famous only reverberates to the roof of a ceiling. It doesn't go beyond. 
But somehow, the songs of life, somehow the songs of hope, somehow the songs of inspiration that God wants to birth in your spirit, man, reverberate out. And it goes on, and it goes on, and it goes on. When I'm singing in my spirit, man, and I'm not talking about just having a literal song, but when my spirit comes alive in him and I let it out, that jump for joy, that sense of being a person with a song in their heart, it affects the spirit world around me. It pushes back darkness. But it also, the vibration, there's something about music. I mean, we've got musical experts here that could talk about it. The vibration that is going on. It's, a, you know, a piano. It's, it's that, it really, it's not the, those keys. It's what's striking that chord, the vibration. Down here, there's these speakers that if you put your ears up next to them, you don't hear anything, do you? You think the sound is coming from up there. But those speakers down there are just as important because it deals with the vibration that's going on inside of you. And another song from back in the day, it wasn't spiritual. Got to have these good vibrations going on that the Beach Boys would sing about. But you know, it only goes so far. But there is a vibration that occurs inside of our spirit, man, that brings healing, that brings restoration, that renews us by the power of the Holy Spirit, of a living God, so that as we get older, we get better. As we get more mature, it actually enables us to do things in a new way, to do things easier, with less stress. Because of those trust issues, how many of you at night sometimes, I mean, you don't have to raise your hand, but how many of you at night feel like you've got to hold up the world? You're thinking, and you're overthinking, and it's all about trust. Because you're figuring, you know, I, I got to figure this out. What am I going to do? How am I going to fix the situation? If I maneuver here, if I do this, if I do that, and you overthink to the point where you're blah, 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 you, you go insane inside of yourself, and yet you don't have the solutions. But when you're trusting in Jesus, he births a song inside of us that enables us to have the right perspective. And at night, when we lay our heads on our pillows, God wants to grant his children rest. He wants to give you rest from your stress, from your overthinking, from your lack of trust, because you're placing your trust in a reliable source that has the ability and has the strength to see you through to the other side. It was another song that was birthed in my heart when I had to step out by faith, be involved in ministry with a lack of tr confidence in myself, working with this dynamo of energy and anointing, this woman, a great woman of faith, and I felt like I had two left feet, and how am I going to do this? How am I going to help her? And it was easy at first to say, well, I'll, I'll carry your luggage. I'll do this for you. I'll, I'll make sure the platform is, I, I, I'm good at, I mean, I know how to organize things. And so I put my trust in that. I can be the organizer. I can set the platform, get things ready, and then you go do it. But then all of a sudden, I was being called upon, and I had to actually, oh, trust Jesus to be vulnerable, trust Jesus to be open and expose myself before the world. And that was a, a challenge for me. I had to trust him in new ways. And so God birthed a new song in my heart from the Psalms and said, 
I'm confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in me will perform it to the day of Jesus Christ. I'm confident, as I was going through situations, I'm confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in me will perform it. And so little by little, that had to be the song in my spirit, man. What is the song in your life today? I go way, way back. I used to love this song. Born to lose. I've lived my life in pain. Ray Charles. I mean, it was, it was like, ugh. It touches some chord inside of a person. But I had to shake myself. I am not born to lose. I am not born to lose. Because I am confident of this very thing. That he who has begun a good work in me will perform it to the day of Jesus Christ. There is hope for me. I am not that old person. I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. And I am able to be like a child and leap for joy. But there has got to be a song in your heart. What is the song in your heart today? What is the song in your heart today? What is the song in your heart today? God wants to give you a song and give you a new perspective of trust in him. Proverbs eleven twenty eight says, A life devoted or trusting in things is a dead life, a stump. A God-shaped life is a flourishing tree. Best compliments that Sandra ever pays to me is when she says, you're my oak tree. Well, if I'm going to be a good oak tree, I've got to be stable. I've got to flourish. I've got to be well watered. I need to be planted by streams of living water that yields its fruit in every season. I've got to be better later than I was at the beginning to save the best for last. And so over time, I've had to learn to trust in Jesus in new ways, to be a flourishing tree, to be able to do all things through Christ as he strengthens me. Psalm 118 verses 8 and 9 says, It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in a prince. You, you learn in the Bible, there's this stories about these prince of darkness. These powers that change and are very awe-inspiring at moments. And then suddenly they're gone or Suddenly we find out the reality of, of their fallen nature, their human flesh. And we get so disappointed. You know, the, the next new political leader or the next savior, the next one to, to have all the answers. But God wants to lead us in a better path so that we don't place more weight. Jesus teaches us that his yoke is easy and his burden is light. If you're placing too much trust in someone else to make you happy, you are going to be disappointed. But when you place your trust in Jesus, Jesus, if all you can cry out is Jesus, you will not be disappointed. I can remember as a little boy, uh, I was like seven years old, and I, thought, I saw this one guy that I thought was really cool. And I wanted to emulate him. I wanted to be like him. He seemed to have all, he, he was like a 10-year-old, you know, upperclassman. <laughs> I was seven, you know. And I thought, oh, that guy's so cool. And, uh, you know, I wanted to be his friend, but he didn't know who I was. And, you know, he just young and, and uh, but I, I thought he, well, he 
combed his hair or the way he dressed or the way he walked. It was so cool. I wanted to be just like him, you know. And I can remember one day, and it was like a real slap in my face, but it was good for me. But I remember one day walking down on the street where my house was. You walked about two blocks down, and there was this creek, and there was a bridge that went over the creek. And I was walking along, and here I see this guy coming. And in my heart, I go, oh, wow, I'm going to get to talk to him. You know, he's a cool guy. You know, and he was with a couple of his buddies. But instead of greeting me and saying, hey, Norman, how you, how's it going? I mean, he didn't know me from Adam. He started picking on me. And, and I'm going, oh, my little brain was just, it just was not computing. You know, don't you know, I, you're a hero worship. You're the cool guy. And he ended up pushing me into the side of the bridge. And I hit the, the metal bars on the bridge so hard that I actually cracked a rib. And it was one of those, those Kodak moments where you, know, you lose your breath. And you go, oh, I couldn't breathe because I cracked my rib. And he went on his way and he thought, ah, you know, this little punk, you know. And I, I was hurt, but more than being physically hurt, I mean, I actually cracked a rib, but emotionally I was like, my hero just let me down. And I realized that in that moment, just because somebody looks cool, talks cool, doesn't mean they're cool. I had to learn, and we still have to learn, where we place our trust. Down through the years, God has put many songs in my heart. Another one simply says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. For the path of the just is as a shining light leading unto the perfect day and the steps of a good man by faith are ordered by the Lord. Though he falls, he shall not be utterly cast down. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And these are the things that go over in my little brain on a daily basis. I sing a song in my heart when I'm facing crisis, when I'm facing disappointment, when I'm facing pain, and I don't have the, all the answers. I simply begin to sing in my spirit, man, trust in the Lord with all my heart. Lean not unto my own understanding, but in all of my ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct my path. And even if I fall down, I will not be utterly cast down. This afternoon, we are here to affirm the faithfulness, the reliability, the strength, the durability of trusting in Jesus. Trust in him with your relationships, Trust in him with your job. Trust in him with your children. Trust in his ability to get you in the right place at the right time. You know, sometimes we figure, you know, oh, yeah, I, I could have, would have, should have. If I should have been there. If I'd have been there, it had all worked out. But I wasn't there, and so somebody else got the opportunity. And so I'm going to miss out. And my life will be forever you know, in ruins because I wasn't there at the right time. But you know what? Even the, the little detours of life, even in the little things that we had perhaps not planned, because I love to plan things out. I love organizing myself. But I have to believe that I believe that I believe that I can trust in the Lord with all my heart and not just lean to my own understanding but acknowledge him. Let it be known. 
Let it be shouted on the rooftop. Let there be a song in my heart that reverberates and vibrates inside of me that enables me to be in his timing, in his season, even if it was not the plan I had thought was right. But his ways, you got to say it, his ways, his ways, his ways are better than my ways. And you have to believe it and trust in him. This is the end of the teaching from our pastors. For more information, visit thecrossroads.org or download our app in the App Store. Thank you for listening.